Hey everybody, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. I'm Lauren and we've been hard at work getting our shop ready for opening, grand opening. We're just days away, but I wanted to take some time out from working on the shop and finally get back to a furniture flip. This is the official inaugural set of nightstands that will be the first flip in the shop for the shop. So a little bit of background on these pieces. Found them on Facebook Marketplace with another piece that I didn't really like. And so I was just like, can you take 80 for the two nightstands? He said, yes, we picked them up. I loved the shape of them, but I just don't love the brown wood anymore. And the reason I'm choosing these to do today is because nightstands can be pretty fast flips and I kind of need a fast flip since we've got so much else going on. But also we have nothing like this in the shop for sale. Um, so the way that I'm going to be making these over is going to be really awesome, really in style, and we can get pretty good money for a nightstand pair like this. First things first, we are going to remove the hardware. I'm thinking I'm gonna reuse this on this piece. I'm just gonna see, ah, a little rusty. I'm just gonna see once the finish, once it's like finished to make sure that these actually go with the look. Otherwise I may need to switch them out. And I don't, the drawers are gonna give me trouble getting them out. So for now, I'm just gonna leave them in. Shout out to Nana, always looking out. She saves all of her plastic containers for me. So whether it be trail mix, coffee, Cool Whip, I've always got stuff on hand, so thanks, Nana. And that's just a tip for you guys if you don't wanna go out buying like specific containers, reuse the items that you've like eaten or used around the house into the garage and utilize them with your flips. Next up, we are gonna clean. So we've got white lightning cleaner in here. It comes in that granule substance and then I just like to dilute it with, or like mix it in with some water so it dissolves. And then I put it in a spray bottle for easy application on my piece. This will get all that dirt, grime, dust, oil, grease off of the surface so that my paint can really adhere well. And the reason I like to clean prior to sanding is because I don't want to get that, I don't want to sand and then get all of those oils and greases dug down deep into the surface. So I like to clean it again after I sand, not really clean, but wipe down the dust. Um, I guess it's personal preference, but that's my reasoning behind why I do that. So it's just something to think about when you are doing your pieces. I'm gonna do a quick clean on the insides of the drawers. A lot of the times the drawers aren't necessarily dirty, but they've got just some gunk in there. So I'm just gonna suck it out with my shop vac. Last, I've just got a wet rag with clean water, and I'm just gonna rinse everything that I use the white lightning on just so that it doesn't give and leave anything any type of residue behind. Okay, it's time to sand. And I told you I was gonna keep this pretty simple, even beginner friendly. Uh, so I've got my Ryobi orbital sander here. I'm gonna do a little bit with this on the flat surfaces. And then where I can't reach this into, I'll just go ahead and do it um, by hand. So like I said, I'm gonna go in with a little disc with my hand and get all of the nooks and crannies 
Typically, I would use my surf prep sander with the sponge abrasive foam pads or even the pads for my orbital. I don't have those here with me at the shop just yet. So I'm working with what I've got, but I've also just wanna show you guys that you don't always have to have those fancy tools. Those do make it easier, but this is just as well as well. Also, I wanted to say that the reason that I am scuff sanding is because we're just trying to basically roughen up the surface a tad bit because we want the paint to adhere. The paint that I'm using doesn't require a primer as long as you're not going to get any bleed through or your surface isn't too slick. So that's what we're basically doing is making sure that the surface isn't too slick so that the paint can adhere really nicely. Then I'll just go ahead and rinse off all of the sanding dust. It typically won't look super different after you do the sanding unless you're like busting through a bunch of finish. Um, but usually there's a difference in the feeling of the surface. I do believe we're ready to paint. I am gonna be utilizing my table here so that I don't have to bend over and I don't have to be down on my knees. This table has definitely come in handy, so this is your sign. If you don't have a work table, get yourself one. This one is from Home Depot. It was like maybe $300 or something like that. I'm sure they have them on Amazon as well. I'll link a similar one or one from this one on the, in the description down below. So the color that I have chosen is from Dixie Belle's Silk line and it is called Sandcastle. So it's kind of like a neutral tan color, a little bit on the lighter side. And I've gone ahead and mixed it already and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it. So again, like I said, this paint can be applied directly to your surface without primer as long as you're not worried about the bleed through or the adhesion. The reason why I'm not worried about bleed through on this piece is because because I was really careful not to bust through the finish, as well as when I was cleaning, I didn't really see any signs of bleed through, like coloring, dark coloring, red coloring, wood coloring, things like that. So those are some things you could look for uh, to kind of help you know if it's gonna bleed or not. I've also got my mister bottle in my right hand. This is just water. It's gonna help my paint glide on really nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna be using the mini angled brush. It's gotten a lot of love, but it is the mini angled brush. I like this one because it just fits right in the palm of my hand and it's really easy to utilize. First coat on everything is finished up. So we're gonna let that dry for a little while here. This one over here that I did first is almost dry already. So we'll be able to recoat in no time. We're ready for coat number two. Same thing. I just wanna get a little bit better coverage here. The first coat did get pretty good coverage, especially going from such a dark color to such a light color. But that second coat will give you both coverage and better durability. So even if you're getting pretty much full coverage with the silk paint, it's really highly suggested um, to get that durability to do two coats at least. Also, I wanted to show you guys, I have literally used about this much paint so far. So brushing on the silk paint and really any paint is going to save you paint. Sometimes you may wanna spray and you'll use a bit more paint, but still a little bit goes a long way with the paint. Two coats 
coats are done on these guys. We need to let them dry and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we're ready to move on. So I've got my Van Dyke Brown glaze here from Dixie Belle. I have not tried this just yet, but I'm excited to attempt uh, a raw wood look on this furniture without having to sand it back and like make it be true raw wood. So this method could essentially work on things like laminate or any other type of furniture, MDF, uh, particle board that's not real wood if you still wanted to get that look. So I've got my Van Dyke glaze, the brown, and then I've also got my Big Daddy brush. So this is gonna kind of help me get that wood effect on it, I think. So I've got a little um, container here that I'm going to pour my glaze into just so that my brush will actually fit. And then I'm gonna start out with just my mini brush, uh, brushing this on. I don't really want it to be too thick, but I just want it to be enough. And I'm just kind of gonna work in sections because if you think of the grain of the wood, you're going to want it to follow a pattern kind of. So when the pieces are going up and down, I'm probably gonna want that up and down wood look. And then when the pieces are going side to side, I'm probably going to want to switch it to be that side to side look. Okay, so we've got that middle portion covered. And then I'm going to just take my Big Daddy brush and we're going to basically kind of kind of wipe some off. And then I've got a towel down here that I am just wiping off the excess glaze before I go and push it along the surface each time. And then if there's any areas that you think you need to go back and fix, you can do that. Yeah, we've got that one section done. Now we'll move on. You don't wanna work too slow with this method. The one thing that if you wanted to go a little slower, you could do would be to tape off different sections. That's an option. I am going to try and do it without taping off sections. And the sections would just basically mean that down here, I would tape it off so I didn't get any extra glaze on there. And that way I knew it wouldn't dry on there in a weird pattern. So this is with the paintbrush. This is with the Big Daddy brush. So I'm just gonna take that same guy, go down with it. First one's done. I love it. It's definitely got that part pottery barn vibe going on. So that's kind of the look I was going for. It's a really popular look. Plus nightstands are super popular as well. And let's move on to number two. So now that I've got one under my belt, I've already learned a couple things I wanted to share with you guys. Um, as I was saying, it dries pretty quick. So you kind of want to work quickly. The little paper towel to wipe off the glaze in between swipes is key because if you don't wipe off the brush in between, this is going to continue to get that glaze on there and have too much on there to even be able to wipe it back. So where you start, it will be much lighter. And then as you go around, it'll be darker, which won't be a consistent finish throughout the whole piece. So definitely wipe it back. And now that I'm on to my next nightstand, I even went ahead and just started fresh. I cleaned this off and dried it. Um, these do dry a lot faster than the synthetic brushes, the um, natural bristle brushes. So I just dried it on a paper towel as well. It's ready to go, good as new. 
I don't know. I just I'm having a really good, a really fun time doing this. It's allowing me to be creative and just really focus on the project. Painting projects are a lot of the times therapeutic for me, so this is kind of a great time for me to be taking a minute to do a project because there's a lot of chaos going on out there in our store with just a couple of days left until grand opening. So I'm really having a great time on this project. I just cannot get over how good these look. I love this look. And like I said, it's super popular right now. So I am going to top coat them and then we'll be done. This was a relatively quick flip. Um, I'm gonna be using the Dixie Belle Clear Coat in Satin. This is my go-to top coat really on most of my projects. It's very durable and it just gives a tiny bit of a sheen on your piece without being too glossy, but still holding up really well. Then I've got the Dixie Belle Fan Mini Brush to apply. And now we're back where we started with much better looking nightstands. We're gonna go ahead and reattach the hardware. Um, like I said at the beginning, I think this will be just fine to put back on there. If I get it on and I don't like it, I can always change it around, but I think I'm gonna like it just fine. All right, this is the first furniture that I flipped in the shop for the shop and it is done and I love it. And it is now on the showroom floor available for purchase on our grand opening. I think these look absolutely incredible. They look like completely different pieces um, aside obviously from the shape of them. Um, but I just think that they brought, I brought them into the modern world thanks to Dixie Bell's products. So if you're interested in getting this Pottery Barn look, this raw wood look without having to strip back the furniture uh, sealer or the varnish that's on your pieces, or if you don't have a wood piece of furniture, this could be a great option for you. Again, I used Sandcastle from their silk line and then the Brown Van Dyke glaze Loved it, top coated it with satin, and they came to life. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side.